here's the deal. I'm planning to make today a mostly optimizations day. Uh, I do intend to solve a level right at the start and I'll explain why. But basically last time we completed the stack level with this ridiculous mess. And there's a lot of improvements I can make here, hopefully. And while we're at it, I felt like I might as well do some improvements to custom components and stuff. So most of the video I intend to be doing improvements. Now, before I get into anything, I just want to do a quick reminder of the fact that my scores, my gate scores, do not seem to reflect what my actual solutions are. So most importantly, this is what bothers me the most is this XOR. I have a gate score of three in here and if I run it, it's correct. So we are at gate score, score three. We have completed the level, rerun it. We got a gate score of three. We press onwards and our score on the map on the XOR level is still five. From what I gather, uh, this is either a bug or well, something weird. Basically this five is supposed to update and I've taken a closer look at what's happening. I've looked on Discord and it seems like people are suggesting, I haven't tested this or really read too much, but people are suggesting that after solving the delay level, which is this one, handily we have it unlocked. Uh, I should unlock some additional features for scoring or something. And hopefully that'll fix my issue. So yeah. Let's start with delay. Uh, and if I complete this in a reasonable amount of time and it fixes my gate scores, I'm gonna go and do improvements all over the place. So let's take a look here. All components have a delay. Oh yes, mind bending this is going to be. At least I expect it to be. And in the circuit, the to oh, I, I can already see, I'm sorry, I'm, I, I keep looking around. I can already see a delay score up here. Okay, this means you normally want to put things in parallel. Oh, uh, and in this circuit, the total delay is determined by the slowest path. Okay, this means you normally want to put things in parallel. In this level, you must prove that you understand this concept. Well, the concept seems fairly intuitive. The delay of any component is ultimately derived from the delay of the basic gates, which have a delay of two. Why two? Why not one? It's a bit weird, but okay. Build a circuit with a delay of six and a gate cost of five. Um, hey, um, okay, one, two. All right. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just slightly confused by the fact that I don't actually need to do anything in the circuit. So it doesn't really matter how I connect them. Uh, but I think, yeah, in order to get to gate score six, I necessarily need to use six NANDs. And I think in order to have a delay, I do need something connected. So let's connect them up. Um, I think this should do something along those lines, right? Uh, and this should, okay, no. Oh, right, right. I'm confused. Uh, I'm confusing myself because uh, the delay score of a single gate is not one or yeah, it's not one, it's two. Wait, but then how on earth do I get a Oh, delay of six, gate cost of five. Right, I'm again confused. So gate score five, delay six. Okay, perfect. I thought it was uh, delay five and gate, gate cost six. Sure, there, there we are. I don't need to connect these ants to anything, although I could and I think it would be fine. Note, you can see the delay path by clicking okay so this you can see the slowest path by clicking this hourglass cool plus two plus two sure okay we unlocked the manual entry and we unlocked delay and we also unlocked 
configurable amount of delay. Well, you see, hmm, there's. I'm still slightly confused because this delay does not actually mean anything other than a number up here, right? In the same way that gate score doesn't really exist in real world, it's just a number I can calculate based on the number of components I use, but doesn't influence anything. The same thing is true here. I, I guess it can intuitively be thought of as a sort of delay, but um, I wouldn't expect, so for example, if I connect, this would be a delay of 4. Right? If I connect something here, it's not like this is gonna happen first and then this is gonna happen. They're both gonna be instant. But oh well. Okay, let's take a look at the manual page we unlocked. Oh no. Um. Nope. What's nope? Oh yeah, of course nope. Sorry. Check. Correct. Manual entry. Delay. In real hardware, all components have delay. This is important since the delay in a circuit determines the maximum speed at which you can run it. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what the speed also would mean, but okay. I guess that's the speed of ticks. You know, how many ticks per second happen? Uh, following wires from input to output and adding the delay of components in the path will give you the delay of that path. The delay of a circuit is the delay of the slowest path, sure. Besides inputs, paths can also start from components with no pin inputs. Wait, with no round pin inputs. Weird text display. Uh, like counter and on. Okay. And they can... And... They can end at also end at square pins. They can also end at square pins, I assume. Uh, further custom components don't have a delay score for the co costliest path of the whole component. What's... But rather the delay cost is calculated per pin. Aha, uh -huh, I see. I should read full sentences. This is so as to not penalize using custom components by making faster pins cost the same as the slower ones. Sure, okay, okay, cool. So we have unlocked, yes, we have unlocked delays now. Uh, sorry for the random freezes, by the way. Um, I don't know if they're bothering you, they are bothering me, I can, I can see it. This is unfortunately not the game, this is my PC. And I haven't been able to figure out how to fix that, so. Hopefully, it'll be fine. Okay, so we have, in scores, I assume scores are sums of gate plus delay score, right? Five plus six, sum, two plus four, six, cool. Let's see if this helps with the update situation. Gate three, delay four, score seven. Delay four. No, I can't make a better delay than four. Oh, yes. Would you look at that? My gate score on the XOR is now three. Has this... Oh, I didn't... <laughs> I didn't take note of what all the other scores were, but it should have updated all the levels in which XORs are used. Let's try and find... Uh, well, sure. Here's an XNOR. XNOR definitely uses an XOR. And... Yeah. It's gate score four, so it did update everything, and I assume, yes, my XOR component is also delay four. So that was really counterintuitive, uh, the fact that you need to complete a level even though you have unlocked scores. In order to get them to update, you need to complete delay, uh, even though delay doesn't really influence the gate score. But I guess... Nah. There's, I don't think there's any good explanation. I think this is just, this just needs to be implemented or fixed. Okay, so 
What's the plan now? Either I go top to bottom and I start at the stack and I uh, start improving components from it. Or actually, I have been thinking, I might literally go over all the levels now. And I'm not gonna, I'm definitely not gonna optimize them to ridiculous extents. Uh, but where I see simple improvements, I could try to apply them. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm gonna do that. But uh, just so it's a bit more fun to watch, I guess. Uh, I'm gonna go over them myself. And when I find improvements, I'm gonna uh, come back and record stuff that I actually do. So I'm, I'm gonna do search from bottom to top and I guess left to right. So depth, uh, breadth first search with a clockwise direction. Does that, does that sound good? Hopefully so. Here I go. There we go. Right out of basic logic, the level double trouble. This ridiculous mess. Uh, the tooltip for this one was don't overthink things. Don't overthink this level. And I think I even looked up the solution and this was the solution for it on YouTube. There's no way this is that. Uh, I've given it a quick thought and I'm pretty sure I can do better. So yeah, uh, just to remind you, this level has four inputs, output green, when two or more of them are green. And I think I even had, I, I was close to the more optimal solution. I already created an optimized uh, schematic. I think I was close with my original attempt. I don't actually remember what I did exactly, but I'm pretty sure the first thing I tried was using two ores like so. And you know, um, yeah. So we ore these things, and this is this is kind of the ore of everything. Uh, but this doesn't catch. How do I explain it? If if the two different signals are in different halves, right? If one is at the bottom and one is at the top, then this catches our correct output, and this doesn't or uh, but unfortunately this is not sufficient if uh, our two signals are both at the top half or both in the bottom half and well I don't know why but I could have just easily caught them with ends like so, uh, so I guess let's remove the or for now so we have an end like this one and we have an end like this one and then I just or this stuff. Uh, yeah, and another or. I, th I think this is better, right? I'm, I'm pretty sure this is fewer gates. What's the gate score on this? Seven versus 11, yeah. This is an improvement and I think this should work. It'll be embarrassing if it doesn't. It doesn't, why? <laughs> Uh, does it catch, uh, oh, it catches wrong situations. Wait. Yeah, I don't, uh, so what I want is not an or. What I wanted originally was not an or. I think I want an end at the, at the end over here. Is that right? No, this is still wrong. <laughs> okay, this is embarrassing. Uh, but the idea is there. I'm gonna, I don't want to spend too much time on this one video, so I'm gonna fiddle with this some more and hopefully I can fix it. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty close. Uh, I just did made a simple error at the very beginning uh, in order to make sure that the two different signals come from two different halves, right from this or and from this or I need an end for them, not an end at the output. Uh, right. I need one signal from here and one signal from here. And this end ensures they are different. They are both, they come from both paths. Uh, this kind of begs 
a question of symmetry for me, right? See, the output is a triple or of three ends, really, right? We have this end, this end, and this end. Uh, and these ends check different groups, right? So this one checks a simple group of these two. Well, uh, really, it, 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 it just... I, I'm not sure how to explain this. Uh, well, you, you can see it in the circuit. This end just checks these two inputs. This end checks these two inputs. And this, this end checks all four inputs, but grouped with these two ORs. Could I perhaps do something more symmetric where I check with a, uh, with an end against the group, a single input against the group, and then another end I use to check a single input against the group, and then th that same thing again, or something along these lines. I'm going to fiddle with this some more, uh, just because I am curious about it, and I'll be back. No. I don't think I'm gonna be able to come up with anything better. It's still a bit frustrating. It seems like there should be a better solution, but this is probably the best I can do. So yeah, we have, uh, it's either two of the first, two of the second, or it's one from the first pair and, uh, well, at least one from the first pair and at least one from the second pair. So this is this. Um, yeah, that's going to be me and I'm going to proceed. Counting signals. This is just ridiculous. I have a hanging end, which is just left in because it was metric. And that does influence the gate score. So that's an improvement. Cool. 23 now. Yep. Continuing on. And this is just a ridiculous wiring job for the full adder. What is this? Who came up with this? Uh, we have our pairs of XOR and end, XOR and end, right? And they are they get piped uh, the same stuff. Uh, so this, sh this should be optimizable. I'm just gonna rewire this real quick. Yeah, I even have a picture for this. Remember this one? Yeah, there we go. And this does make more sense, uh, kind of inverted. Uh, I actually swapped carry in some places. So yeah, this would grow downward like so. Uh, but instead of, uh, unlike the full edition, which uses binary representations, uh, we only carry with an XOR. So, yeah. Uh, let's double check. I did just check it. Yeah. Cool. Uh, this didn't improve my score, and I don't think I can improve my score here at all. This looks very efficient. So, let's proceed. Where even was I? The full ladder. Okay. Ah, by the way, I just remembered, uh, all the way back here, I didn't check this level because this has a check mark and isn't scored, but still, I want to go back to this. This was the logician in me speaking, uh, right? We need an always on. Well, I decided that uh, an always on is going to be the law of excluded middle, right? A or not A. That's going to be a constant truth. But uh, in the world of, uh, what would you call it, electrical engineering, this is the always on. <laughs> yeah, just wanted to clear this one up and I'll get back to it. Ah, the byte adder really is quite beautiful, isn't it? I love this yellow line. No improvements, just wanted to admire it again. Oh, 
Okay, here's another one. Signed Negator. I am pretty sure at least one improvement should be possible here. This full adder is actually a plus plus. And as we know, a plus plus is a much simpler operation than a full adder. Full adder costs 88, while a plus plus, it actually should be in my factory right now. Yeah. A plus plus costs 28. So we're gonna save a ton by just applying this. Uh, which uh, I guess I can work on this. I, I just wanna compact it a little bit. It looks like junk. So, yeah, I'll start with this. Isn't this cool? Is it ridiculous? Yes. Cool? Absolutely. I love it. Uh, so, th this is the same, the exact same circuit. This is the equivalent of what was there on the screen before. Uh, except uh, it was huge in the sense that it grows downwards, and when something grows downwards, it gets. A, it becomes a long custom factory component. You know, this shape gets weird. And, well, I decided to try to condense it, and this is what I came up with. So, so basically, we grow this way, and then we go here, and then we grow upwards. Right, and we have our yellow carry line, and green is the input, and white is the output, as per usual. Uh, which, actually, yeah. Nowadays I use green as the output, I don't know. Uh, that's that's doesn't matter. So yeah, uh, I'm not entirely happy with this thing. Oh, and also yeah, I want I want nice shapes as always. So I'm gonna add a couple of offs over here and over here just to fill these two squares. Yeah, and now we have a nice, neat little um, component. So yeah, now we have this. It's already saved to my uh, component factory as a 8-bit thing. It should be in here. But unfortunately, the component factory is not available in the level I am looking to optimize, which at this point I've already forgotten where I was. I think it was... Uh, what was it? Let me take logic. No, not... Sign negator. Yeah. Okay. We were reducing this thing. So, yeah, what I need is I need to put this in. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Okay, I'll do that. And I'll be back. There we go. The negations are down here now. And, well, it's the same thing. So, we have just improved our score on the sign negator from... Uh, what was it? I did save to a different schematic. Uh, we used to have gate score of 96 and delay of 82. While with this guy, oh wow, did you look at that? 36 to 18. Cool. Loving this. Let's proceed. Where was I? Sign negator. Okay. And straight away. The next thing I wanted to improve, and this is actually also going to be relevant for our level at hand, this one, the stack, uh, is the register. What is it? Saving bytes. So, I believe, I'm not entirely sure yet, but I think, like I said in the previous video, I think this green line is not efficient. I think the one bit memory, so let's take a look to the previous saving gracefully. So basically this, this is where we unlock the single component. There it is. Uh, it has a gate and delay score of four, which I, I'm pretty sure I won't be able to optimize this at all. Uh, but the important part is this is the green line Right, let's even color it in place, I think. It should be fine. And these are whatever I called it. It's probably the red line or something. 
And this is our memory cell. So this inside of it, it does a decoder, right? With this knot and this, uh, these two switches. And it has a memory cell. And I think if I unwrap it in here uh, and, you know, paste the cell itself a million times, then I should be able to use the green line once uh, or decode the green line once with the knot. Actually, have I? Do I have a decoder? Still don't. Wait, I never did. What? I'm uh, I'm confused. Don't I have a one-bit decoder component at this point? What? One-bit decoder? Yeah, this. It's a lovely, it's a lovely little component. I want to use it, but I can't. That sucks. Oh well. Yeah. So uh, I copy the memory cell itself. So I basically I can reduce it by eight knots, which is kind of an over the top optimization. Don't think it's actually actually is going to make that much of a difference. Although if we have a million registers like in 256 bits of RAM or bytes of RAM, then of course this is going to be huge because it's going to multiply. So I'm going to try to implement this and I'll be back with the results. There we go. I'm pretty sure this is an improvement. So yeah, just like I explained, uh, we have this input and instead of piping it directly into each memory cell and decoding it there, first we decode it. So this is in the equivalent of a decoder. And then it decides if we're saving, then it's green line. If we're not saving, then it's a uh, gray line and we keep the saved value. Uh, other than that, it's all the same. Um, and we do, this is actually going to be the next thing I do. We do have this enable pin in the output, which is used for load versus don't load, right? Uh, but I think I would like to also, while I'm at it, create a custom component that will not have this pin because this pin also costs money. It costs uh, the gate score of one, I believe, because this is effectively a switch. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to copy this into the factory and create a register with an always on output, which I do use quite often. So I'll be right back. Let's say it's something like this. Whatever. Squished as always. Well, I mean, I would be lying if I said I wasn't considering squishing these. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, it's the same thing, except we don't have uh, a switch on the output. And I also use the proper decoder here instead of a note, instead of a not. And actually, this has a gate score of 25 plus 4. While, if we take a look back at saving bytes, this was 33 plus 4, even though they're exactly the same. I am not sure where the difference of 8 gates comes from, really. I, it almost seems as if I lost a cell. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 cells I have. It's fine, I have my decoder, this should work. This is the same thing. Just rotated these guys, the splitter and the maker. And yeah, the only difference I can really see is the lack of this pin and the lack of another input. But inputs are free if we take a look. A one bit input, for example, this is free. This is no problem. So I'm not sure where the difference is coming from, but this is a pretty important thing. So now we have this. And while we're here, let's also perform depth first search for a moment. So yeah, I call this register plus, I don't know. Uh, let's actually, let's call this something like base register. 
because I do not expect to be using this in its raw state pretty much ever. And instead, I would be using something cooler like this, right? But now we can reduce this guy from using an expensive 8-bit register with the gate score of 33 to using our custom, lovely, amazing base register. Uh, except I need to... Okay, uh, which is which? So this is save value, so this goes into here. This is save, so this goes into my save. Like so. And then... The output is my output. So we have now saved a bunch of gate score. Uh, as well as actually delay score. Uh, no, no, you didn't save delay score, but we saved on the sum. Okay, but now that I'm looking at this, I am reminded of the fact that memory probes exist. And actually, I have no idea how to implement a memory probe for my base register. Let's take a look here. If I add configurable delay, no, 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 probes, wire probe. Memory probe bit. Display value on your custom component or in the program. Okay, so. Whoa. Where can I connect? Okay, I can connect it to here. And that is kind of okay, but I don't like this. Well, so here's what I'm thinking. Um, since this register is always going to be spitting out its signal, I believe it should be enough to put a wire probe in here. Um, I would like to fit it inside the actual component. Oh, all right. do I need to pipe a wire into it? Okay. So let's let's try this. I think this should work. Except I would like it to be... <laughs> I don't know. Oh, no, this is actually in the same square as that guy. So I want it a bit lower, like so. Okay. So I can... Um... Let me wire this neatly. Something along these lines. Um... I don't know. I'm not sure if this will work. I'm not sure... Um... See, I'm still, I'm still actually a little bit confused at uh, about what the saved value is, uh, because really the saved value is gonna be these guys, but they can be green without my output actually changing. So once I have saved something, yeah, I will see what's loaded, but I won't see what's saved. It's kind of unfortunate. I mean, I could add a uh, readout with a bunch of uh, bit memory probes. What happens? Can I can I take a memory probe with a number and try connecting it to a bunch of these guys? No, I cannot. I can connect it to only one of these guys. Oh well. Well. Um, We'll, we'll see. We'll see if this is a problem. Uh, it would be unfortunate if it's literally impossible for me to recreate the same behavior, but I'm gonna risk it. And now we have, yeah, so now we pipe the value all the way up the chain into our cool register. This is This should be register plus, but oh well. Okay, so that branch of exploration is done and it's time to proceed we're done with saving bytes it's, it's actually we don't have that much left because i don't intend to uh, improve overture too much uh, i don't really care about overture because i have leg now and leg is cool um, but yeah these levels i'll still take a look at right here's another thing the logic engine. I am pretty sure this is not going to be an improvement for the score. 
However, uh, having looked through the Steam achievements for this game, I believe there is a Steam achievement for completing this without using any um, one-bit gates. So just using the 8-bit stuff from here, not from here. Uh, which should be fairly easy to do. I'm, I'm pretty sure this is gonna reduce my score a lot. Uh, but let's let's do it I guess um, yeah I'll, I'll just I'll just reuse this uh, structure and I'll put stuff instead of the big gates I'll just put uh, connections of 8-bit stuffs be right back actually now that I think of it I probably shouldn't have been so certain that I'm not gonna get a better score because these things are indeed duplicate. So if, if we take a look here, I need to OR the two things, right? But then if I need an OR, well, I can just reuse my OR. I can pipe it into a knot. And if I want a an end, I will need a, a not or of nots. But then if I need an and, then I need that negated. Or, well, rather, an and is gonna be not an or of two, of two nots, reducing um, the number of stuff. And then uh, I can just, in order to get an end, I can negate an and. So I would need this. Although this still looks, still doesn't look good, does it? Well, I think we could we could actually apply the um, whatever it was little box. I, I keep forgetting. But there was there was this level with a clever solution conditions. Yeah. What? That's not my clever solution. Where's my clever solution? This is the clever solution, right? Remember this one? I think it should actually be possible to apply this cleverness to the stuff. So if, um, give me a second. So yeah, an and is going to be an and negated. So these two are going to negate my output or actually, no, sorry, these two are going to negate my output. Well, these two, this one and this one, negate my inputs. So I think I can be clever about this and use the same the same kind of um, approach. And I'm going to say that, uh, well, uh, of course, uh, these two guys correspond to bit one. And the second two guys, these two guys correspond to bit two of my instruction. So yeah, I think, I think I can get away with two knots and or and another knot for the output. And that's all, which is going to cost me. Let's see. Well, it's definitely going to be better because a knot or an or. Oh, actually, an or is pretty cheap. An and an and an or. Oh, OK. Um, you know what? That's not actually gonna, it's not gonna improve my score, I don't think, because I'll still need some, uh, muxage happening, uh, in order to control these inputs. But still, I think, I think I'll still do this because I am curious. What? Why can I move the inputs? I thought I couldn't move the inputs on this level. <laughs> okay. Uh, I guess I'm grown up now. I'm allowed to move inputs. Uh. So yeah, I think I think I'll still implement the clever setup for uh, these, even though I think the gate score is gonna remain unchanged. But that that will be better than this. So yeah, be right back. I think this is it. I haven't tested it because I want to get the Steam achievement on camera. <laughs> But, yeah, 
this looks this looks good. I think this might be right. I'm kind of lazy to really think it through all the way, but a simple or works. So zero. If we're if we're zero, then nothing is happening. And right now, what's happening is wait. Actually, what? Yeah, uh, the mux is going to be off. It's going to select the direct. And here it's also going to select the direct signal. We're always going to do an OR. And then again we split into two and NOT and a NOT NOT. Um, and we MUX based on the second bit. Again it's zero. So again we're going to choose the plane signal. So this is just going to be an OR. And the rest I think should fall into place. So let's try. Oh come on! Where's my steam machine? <laughs> It didn't show up. Uh, the the sound was there, but Steam is bugged apparently. Ah, a lot of things are bugged for me right now. That's my fault. Um, okay, cool. This is very cool. This is a very cool solution to the level. And actually, I'm pretty sure. Um, I think it was Yotenido. Sorry, sorry if I'm misremembering things, but I'm pretty sure Yotenido did point out. Uh, because I was grumbling about the fact that I needed to re-implement everything. Um, I'm pretty sure Yoti neither did point out that we could just use these things. Uh, and I... Kind of... I, I did... I did take note, but I thought it wouldn't be interesting or useful. While in fact this is very good. Except I haven't paid attention to my score. So this is 83 plus 14 and the original solution. I would expect it to be exactly the same. Oh, it's better. Huh. Okay. Right. Well, I guess, yeah, I guess um, this is worse because of... Uh, this is worse for the delay because of how nested we are with this uh, logic. And this actually means, I think this suggests that, remember how I used to not use muxes and instead use a decoder board, like this one? I think that might improve it even more, right? Because we wouldn't be increasing the length by chaining muxes. Instead we would have a decoder and then there would be a single selection happening. So you know, the depth of this muxage would be taken up by the decoder eaten, and it would just cost one or in delay score. Uh, but I think it would be more expensive in terms of gate score, right? You know what? I'm tempted to try it. I'm tempted to, to put a decoder in here. Yeah, I'll do that real quick. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Actually, this is my original solution. This is default. So I have default. I have mux. This is my mux solution. And I have my new symmetric solution. Where it's symmetric because the scene achievement calls it symmetric. I'm not so sure about this being symmetric. Uh, but okay. Um, and yes, indeed, my original solution is cheaper and in fact it's cheaper in terms of both delay score and gate score so this is 83 plus 10 well my original solution using a decoder board is gonna be 70 plus 6 so this is my real answer i don't think i can improve this uh yeah i wouldn't mind using a custom decoder component for this because I do have cool custom decoders right now but wait actually <laughs> okay uh, give me a second let's check can I can I see scores of selections I can't well one two three four it's five six right so the cost of this 4-bit decoder is 6, and I think mine might operate on a different... Actually, does it? I don't I don't remember exactly. Uh, it will look different, certainly, but... Where's my custom decoder? 
Uh, so yeah, two bit decoder. Here we are. Oh no, it's it's exactly the same except I just use uh, switches instead of ants. Sure. Cool. Okay. So yeah, we're done with that. Uh, we have improved our score, kind of, uh, by just realizing that the original solution was better. And I will keep looking. Okay, here's the counter. And what I can do with counter is a lot, depending on how far I'm willing to go. <laughs> So, we already know that this 8-bit register is, uh, w when it's when it's piped with a constant on, oh, and especially with a constant on on save. Wow, this is a register that's always loading and always saving. So I, I'm pretty sure I can reduce it even more. I think I might be able to remove a whole bunch of switches from my register. Unfortunately, I cannot use a custom component in this because this is a level. But since the counter is going to be present in any architecture, I am inclined to optimize it. And yeah, I cannot be stopped. I don't think... I do not think I can be stopped. I think there is a high probability of me unfolding this 8-bit register and doing stuff. So I'll I'll see what I can do here. Okay, so I'm just looking at the um, the thing I called base register, right? This is the register that's always on. And in the counter, we have our input as always save and always load which this is already always load, but also always saved means this is constant on, right? But if this is constant on, then we can do a whole bunch here, right? We don't need this decoder because we already know that it always decodes to the gray line, uh, which that's kind of weird. How do I save then? Wait, how do I save with this? If this is always... I'm, conf I'm confused. What? Huh. Um, I think I think I do have the correct, the right solution for this, uh, for the problem at hand. Uh, it's basically going to be a loop with plus plus in it. But I'm now confused about what's happening here. Why? How do I save? If this is constantly on. Why is my... Oh, I think... I think my, my register might be wired wrong. I'm just realizing this. Yeah. I'm just realizing this. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Good thing. Good thing. Good thing I spotted it. Uh, this decoder is wired backwards. Wow. Right? Because right now, if I... If my input is off, I do not want to be saving. And in fact, I am saving right now because... The input is piped into my memory cells, and vice versa. If yeah, okay. So yeah, I just need to switch these around. Let's do that real quick. Um, I should have done this off camera, but I've already started, so it's too late. No, let's do like this. Let's go back, squish it all back up. This is the input, and there we go. Okay, so this should be correct. So, uh, again, I don't think this is actually necessary anymore. I think everybody already realizes what needs to be done, but uh, if we take a look at this again, so since we're always saving, we never need to preserve the value that was saved, so these switches are not necessary anymore. But if these switches aren't necessary, then all we have is basically... Oh yeah, and these switches are also always on, so we can connect this. And so 
Considering the fact that we have no switches anywhere, this is literally just an 8-bit delay line, right? And really, a plus-plus operator, all, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a... Uh, so imagine, imagine this is an 8-bit delay component. I'm gonna have it wired up to itself, and I'm gonna have a plus-plus inside. Uh, where's my plus-plus? 8-bit, plus-plus, like so. You know, well, uh, vice, vice versa. Right? That's all. And we're gonna output this thing every time. So let's do that. Um, this is, this feels like cheating a little bit because I believe having completed this level, I receive a counter, which also comes with arbitrary increments, right? Uh, so I am hardwiring a plus plus into it while in fact I need counters to be able to count by more than one. Uh, but well, we'll see, we'll see how this goes. Okay, I'll, I'll wear it all up and I'll be back. Huh. So something I failed to uh, take into account was the fact that this also needs to be able to save a new value, right? I need to be able to overwrite my counter. I'm not sure if this is a problem yet. Uh, I have a hunch it shouldn't be a problem, but I'm not certain. Um, but yeah, this is interesting. So yeah, what, all, all I did for now is I just have my plus plus and I have a single delay for a for an 8-bit line. Yes, I know I am unsplitting and splitting and unsplitting and splitting again, but uh, I think that's fine, especially considering the fact that these splitters cost nothing. They are cosmetic. That's exactly how I'm using them. Um, but yeah, this, this will count, right? This will count from zero. Uh, what does my output need to be at the first, what, sh what should I output? So do I start by outputting one? Let's, tr let's try this. Uh, zero, add one, add one, overwrite with 33. Yeah, so I'm outputting what was there before. Yeah, no, I think I think this should be this still should be fairly simple. I just have a mux here. Uh, well, uh, let's let's just uh, pipe it, just wire it up messily for now. Uh, so I have, based on based on whether I'm saving or not. Right. If uh, my default my default action is to count, which means the default should be this. However, if I'm saving, then I change this, and then I pipe it into here, and then this is my output. Still, this is still my output. Let's test this now. It works. Yeah. It works. Uh, so, score 73. Yeah, gate 53 plus 20. What was my original score? Let's take a look. Efficient plus plus. Why does it? Oh, yeah, because it's efficient. Unfortunately, I lost my ridiculous contraption over here and I've had to rewire it quickly with this. So, yeah, this had the 78 plus 24. So, we have improved. Quite a bit, actually. This is a decent amount of improvement. And the default, which uh, uses a full adder, cost 138, which is completely insane. It's almost triple what we have right now. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. I'll clean this up. Whatever. This is still a bit messy because it's crisscrossing, but uh, it's uh, because you can't flip components, it's always a pain to... Uh, make these uh, circular things. So yeah, that's the counter. And actually, I am curious. Does it? So what was our score? Where's the counter? 53 plus 20. What happens if I now go somewhere late and take a look at the counter? It's 53 plus 20. 
So we have successfully cheated. I am pretty sure. Although maybe it is possible to. So that's that's a good question. Uh, I don't I don't think it's I'm <laughs> sorry. I am pretty sure it is not possible to make a counter that would be variable in its increment like that. Cost as little, right? If I make a, a counter which stores a value by which it increments and is capable of performing different increments in the same component, then I'm pretty sure that will be much more expensive. Uh, but effectively, we could perhaps treat the counter as hardwired to whatever particular increment it's doing. So for example, when I set it to increment by four, uh, what's actually happening is not the state inside the counter changing, but rather this counter invisibly changes to a counter that is hardwired to increment by four. And then perhaps all constant increments can be reduced to the same structure as plus plus uh, and uh, take up the same amount of space. So per perhaps that's how that works, but I'm still not sure that all constant additions are gonna cost the same, which we will kind of find out if, if everything goes well today, uh, because I do intend to create a minus minus which is equivalent to plus plus or plus 255. But for now, I still need to go over a few levels. So I'll do that. Okay, here's another interesting thing. Um, again, I'm not sure, but we've already witnessed how using a uh, decoder can decrease your delay score. And so the clever solution for conditions, which is very clever and very nice, and I'm pretty sure it's going to beat uh, anything else by gate score. But I think my original solution to this might have a much lower delay score. So let's let's take a look. Default? No, this this is why why is default weird? Let's delete it. It's pointless. Uh, I hope unmoved is the same as default. Um, what's the delay on this? No, the delay does look pretty bad. So it's 14. Actually, 14 is not, I think it, it, it's 18. Yeah. So this thing is much larger in terms of gate score, but it is faster. That's interesting. Let's, let's call it, uh, coded. <laughs> I would, I would rename minimal to clever. <laughs> We have decoded and we have clever. Uh, well, I would go for clever because I care about gate scores more than I do about delay scores. It's just probably going to be my preference. I like smaller things, not things that are faster. Uh, okay, I'll keep going. Okay, first of all, it looks like all the actual overture building levels are not scored, right? So during the, the level that's called during complete is not scored. This is where we finished overture. However, programming levels are scored. And in addition to having a gate and a delay score, they also have tick scores. I am <laughs> kind of confused by how I managed to have I was only writing assembly, right? And somehow this level has a worse gate score than this one. What if I rerun it? Um, I should run it at 10 kilohertz. It, is it broken? It looks broken. Nothing's happening. Where's my program? Um, weird. I don't know what's going on here. Well, anyways, uh, my intention is not to fiddle with Overture today. I might in the future, uh, especially if these scores matter for something else. If I get a high score at the end of the game, if, I, if everything sums up, then of course I would want to go back to Overture and optimize that as well. 
But today, that's not my intention, and I'm gonna proceed to some of the other levels that were just isolated things. Gotta love the score on delay on byte constant. Zero gates, zero delay, zero sum. Okay, byte constant was just this. I mean, I guess you could, you actually you could get a worse score if you put a not here. You'll get a worse gate score and worse delay score. So good thing I did it efficiently. Okay, moving on. Hmm, we are entering complicated territory. So, byte XOR is fine. Quality, I think, is also probably fine. I would be surprised if there were major improvements over this. Um, I do a single bitwise operation over everything and then I just condense. Which you would need to condense and you kind of need to perform bitwise operations so yeah this hopefully this is right but the less operation well this is pretty beautiful and i am happy with the idea of this solution i am still not entirely convinced this is efficient at all. I think there might be major improvements to this. As in major. Because comparison seems like an easier operation than this mess. But I don't think I'm gonna be doing this either. Because I have no ideas on how to improve this absolutely none and it wasn't that long ago so we're done yeah same with sign bless i i'm not i haven't <laughs> my knowledge of things has not improved much since completing this level wait how how do how do they have different scores this has 69 what this has 69 and this has 70. how does that have a nicer score and the worst delay, what? They're the same. They're the same picture. 53, 22, 75. Oh, oh, okay. Um, I guess that's the fact that, I guess this is an improvement of my XORs coming. Wait a minute. Oh no, I have to rerun everything. I have actually rerun a lot of levels, but I haven't rerun all of them. So yeah, I think I think this also wasn't at 24 before. Yeah, and this is see right. This is actually a 31, but this is counting it as 47. Okay, well, that's on me. I'm gonna have to go through things and rerun them, but yeah. Okay, so we're done with that. RAM is part of leg. I'm not gonna bother with that. And we are back to the level which started it all. This mess. We now have... Oh no, I cannot use custom components again. I cannot use custom components for this. Uh, but I do want to try making a custom component for a minus minus. So an adder with 255. I think it should be reducible quite a lot. Okay, here's something I've just realized. Uh, this level, once we complete it, is saved, right? Yes. It's saved to my component factory. And I can go work with it in the component factory where I have access to my custom components. And then if I really feel like it, I could uh, go back to the actual level and implement that. Yeah, but here we are in the component factory. Let's, I guess let's copy stack two, whatever, stack two for now. So, um, 
we already have this. We have a cooler register. And what I'm interested in is minus minus. So let's uh, let's create minus minus. This is going to be an 8-bit operation. Minus minus. Should I perhaps start with a plus plus? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay, so we have uh, one 8-bit input and we have white one 8-bit output. And what we're doing is we're doing addition with 255. So, hmm, you know what? I'm pretty sure this is going to require me unfolding my adder. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back. Where? Where's my addition, 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 adding bytes. Here we are. I'm going to copy this. And I'm gonna go back to my component factory. I'm gonna place this, right? And so what's happening is I am adding 255, which is all greens here, right? Give me a constant. So this is gonna be 255, right? And then we can start reducing. We can start taking out components. Although I will probably also want to unfold these adders as well. Yeah. So see, I, I, I'm not sure if I need the carry bit. Well, no, I'm pretty sure I do. I will need this carry, but I don't need this. And also the adder itself can be reduced. So let's go back to the full adder, which we have just optimized. Here we are. Let's copy this. Let's go into this into the factory. And this is what's happening under the hood. Except we have Well, I still have this, and this is still important. I might reduce it here. But the important part is that this thing is on. So Really, I can reduce the adder to a much simpler thing, right? The XOR, or, or well, this AND with a 1 is just the output of XOR. And this XOR with a 1 is just a negation. So I can reduce this to a negation of this, and I don't need this any, anymore. So this is our output. This is our input and output. So I think, I think that's it. I don't think I can reduce this anymore. Right? Well, at least not from this, uh, not if I'm starting from a full adder. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> I cannot be stopped. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a custom component for this. And I'm going to replace these adders with my custom components like this. And then we can talk about more optimizations such as this part. So I implemented a one bit plus plus with a carry. Right, we have carry in, carry out, we have an output, and we have an input. Uh, so it's basically the same as a as an adder. Except we no longer have the sec well, let's just get rid of everything. So this is gonna be input output. Oh no, it's now it's misaligned now. Well whatever. So this is our input. And the output gets propagated to, perhaps this will look better. Oh, this does. The carry gets carried. Mm. So we can copy these a bunch of times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we have our input. Like so.
and we have our outputs. But before I do the outputs, let's also optimize the input. While we're on the topic of optimization, we might as well, right? So this is what's happening under the hood. But I know that my that this is a constant off because I have no carry in. And uh, this means that the end is basically always off. So this is going to be this just so I remember this is off. It's also off. Um, wait a minute. Yeah, and this is my input. So this uh, doesn't change. So XOR with an OFF is the same thing as I am. So I can pipe this straight. But now this XOR with an OFF is also just me. So I can pipe that straight. So really all we have is we pipe this thing out and the carry is a knot. I think I've already done this before. Yeah, the carry is a knot and this just goes out. Uh, whatever. Is this? No, this would be my structure. Okay, and now I just pipe everything to the output. Cool. This should be my minus minus. I'm gonna finish it and I'm gonna test it. And then we'll get back. Ah. While we're still optimizing, I also don't need to carry out. So let's do the motions again. Right, I don't I don't need this pin at all. So these are my outputs and or these are my inputs. Yeah, and what I don't need is the knot here, right? Yeah, the rest the rest is still necessary, so something along these lines. Let's color the thing. Yeah, so this would be my setup. Um like so. Yeah, this is horribly asymmetric, but not like I care that much. So this is the result. Again, I'm gonna test this. Oh, actually, I'm also probably gonna squish it <laughs> because I want a small minus minus. Uh, but I'll do everything and I'll be back. And it's broken. But I'm pretty sure I know what I did wrong. I wired the plus plus wrong. You must have been screaming at the screen, as should be expected by now. Um, I have, uh, yeah, I'm, I messed up. I confused out and carry. So I think it should be the other way around. Like so. Well, whatever. Let's just test it works first. But also, considering I use this as my base for uh, my reductions, I will also need to reconsider all of my reductions. Uh, so let's see. Um, well, I mean, the outputs should still be... Hmm. Did I? I did rewire. Okay. Let's go back and let's reconsider. So, first we're doing this one. This has no carry in, so this is off. Again, and with an off is nothing, so this is off now. Uh, XOR with an off is a not. Wait, XOR with an off is, is, it's not a not, it's just this pipe directly in. So, and XOR with an off is And not again? What? Wait. Okay, I'm probably just tired at this point. <laughs> because I'm making stupid mistakes. But I want to finish. I want to finish. So, I'll just get this to work and I'll be back. Not to torture you too much. With my stupidity. There we go, that's better. And yeah, it was just a bunch of fiddly little things here and there. Um, I won't even go into the details. Uh, so yeah, we have 14 minus minus equals 13 now. 
perfect. Let's test a couple of values, 78, 77. Let's also test the important one. So let's test zero, 255. Let's test uh, an overflow. Let's say 100 is 99, perfect. Well, actually everything was overflowing until now. Uh, how about something like 255? I don't know, that won't make a difference. Let's also test a one, zero, perfect. Cool, so now we have a minus minus component. Let's fire this up, input output, minus minus. Uh, that's gonna be that. Really, I can kind of move this whole thing a little bit. Like so, it doesn't really matter where it is in the schematic. Perfect. Perfect. Zero minus minus equals to 55. Okay. But now I still need to do my whatever it was the stack stack two so I have oh my goodness <laughs> no I need a break but I will I will do this after a break done a little bit of a break taken uh, still tired but I do want to finish this one so let's start by I think let's start by replacing uh, stuff with our fancy new custom components such as the plus plus and minus minus operators. Oh, plus plus is much fatter than the minus minus. Oh yeah, this is actually something I have been thinking about on my break. Let's let's take a look at this real quick. Yes, I couldn't stop myself from thinking about stuff. So I think I think the difference uh, between a constant add of 1 and a constant add of 255 is not that great and is in fact probably quite similar to <laughs> the plus plus and minus minus are probably quite similar to constant addition the addition of any constant so adding 1 or adding 255 is not that much different from adding a simple constant or a, an arbitrary constant and I think I've already considered this right I've already spoken about this uh, when we were looking at the counter this thing and I think if we take a look again uh, for the minus minus I implemented a special plus plus operator and for plus plus while I didn't save it I kind of did implement uh, another simplified thing, right? And I think it might be possible. I'm I'm not in I'm not in good enough shape to really do it right now and to even think it all through. But I think it might be able to create a generic add constant. Well. A generic scheme for creating a constant addition thing based on this except instead of plus plus or minus minus blocks you would have specialized blocks based on what input there is so like plus plus is an adder reduced right considering the fact that we have an on right? and for a constant, uh, for a constant, <laughs> goodness, uh, <laughs> uh, sorry, yeah, I'm really not in good shape <laughs> at the moment. Uh, plus plus is a specialized adder based on one known input, and we know that it is uh, a uh, one. With uh, this in here, really what we have is we know that it's a zero, but we still need to carry, right? Because adding adding a constant one 
just does a thing at the at the beginning. So this is kind of my first reduce thing. But then all everything else is known to be zero. So these are all the same. But in general, since any constant is a known pattern of uh, zeros and ones, right? We'll have this, for example, zero. Then we'll have one, zero, zero, one, one, one. Since they're all get getting piped into stuff, I think, or they, they're all getting piped into adders. I think a reduced adder based on the knowledge of what the input is uh, and a sequence of different kinds of reduced adders might be capable of encoding an arbitrary constant addition. And then depending on how much a reduced adder costs, I think the cost should not vary that much, if at all, I'm not sure. But I'm not, I'm not going to go into any of this right now. Uh, I'm just going to try to optimize this thing. So let's first, so this is our plus plus. Let's just replace it immediately like so. Just uh, actually, yeah, no, this is, I'm already working in a copy. I wanted to save the original. Uh, all right. Now this. I just replace with my minus minus. So that's that. And also we have a always on register. Though we still need to save based on these. So let's take our, I think this is going to be our base register. Wherever that was. Where did I put it? ALU. Oh, there, there you are. Base register. So, yeah, um, oh goodness, nothing fits. Uh, give me a moment. Let's just, let's just do a quick, quick and dirty rewiring of this for now, for the moment. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix wires later. So I can remove this. My save value is this wire. So. This is my output. This is my save value. And this is my save. This guy is my save bit. So we have this now. Okay, so now we have all our custom components in place. But still, uh, first of all, there's spaghetti. And at least one more improvement here, I'm pretty sure. Because these two inputs are complements of each other. I don't need a not here, and instead, uh, this negated should be equivalent to just this. So let's at least do that. So now we have this. Yeah, and now we have these two guys, both piped into different muxes directly, and then an or is used for saving, and then, uh, yeah, this is fine. Uh, what is... Wait, what's up with the... Why is the RAM piped from this guy? Oh, it's because it's because I only save to RAM if we're pushing. Okay. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. All right, so I'm gonna... I'm gonna clean up this spaghetti mess without doing any serious structural changes for now. And I'll be back with a clearer picture. Much better. This is still a work in progress, especially considering the shape. But uh, this this is the same thing. I just rewired everything, re reorganized it. Uh, so what's happening here again is this is our register, and we have a flow this way, clockwise, kind of, right? And all that happens is we load from the register. We do a plus plus and a minus minus. We decide between them based on whether we're pushing or popping or well, uh, we decide uh, the push determines which address we are pushing to. And then the pop decides. Um, wait, no, the, the push decides what we're saving, what address we're saving and the pop decides what um, 
address we are loading from RAM. We are accessing in RAM. Um, yeah, I can't even think. I, I really need to stop this one, but <laughs> I'm plowing ahead because I want to finish the level. This this should be correct because I didn't rewire anything. I didn't change anything, hopefully. Uh, but there's still one more thing that is possibly, possibly bothering me. <laughs> it's these two muxes. Um, so I have these decoders that are inverses of each other. And I think since we are on insane optimizations today, I think this might be the same case uh, we saw in the register where remember we had that green line which was split into multiple decoders. I think the exact same thing is happening here. So we have these two things decoded separately, even though we know that decoding them is actually uh, sufficient to do. It's, it's sufficient to decode them once. So I think I should be able to replace these muxes with something slightly more minimalistic. Uh, but uh, I can't. I don't think I'm going to be doing that today. I, I'll just point it out. And before I bring things any, any further, I think I'm going to call it a day. And we'll get back to this and the addition of constants next time when I'm in better shape. Sound like a plan? Don't tell me. Don't tell me if this is wrong. Even if it is, I don't care. Don't even, don't even bother. <laughs> uh, see you next time.